Full Service Radio is proudly supported and hosted by Simplecast, the easiest way for a podcast creator to publish and distribute audio on the internet. For more information, visit Simplecast.com. Peace, everyone, and welcome to the Edible Activist Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa L. Jones, broadcasting live from the lobby of The Line, D.C. This podcast is where dynamic people of color in the food and agriculture space share their personal food journeys, passions, and perspectives that stem from the land, all exemplifying the spirit of activism in their own edible way. Let's get started. Happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to the Edible Activist Podcast. So today on the show, I have an absolutely dynamic guest. Dr. Nazirik Amend is a naturopathic doctor, homeopath, and Chinese medicine practi- practitioner. Ooh, guys, my headphones just fell off. Bloopers. Okay, let me get myself together. Uh, with over 20 years experience, his practice with some wisdom path is based in Tacoma Park, and he is also licensed as an acupuncturist in the state of Maryland. Dr. Men treats a wide variety of physical, emotional, and mental diseases. He believes the doctor-patient relationship should be used to empower patients to gain control of their health and help them find the balance needed to lead healthy, authentic lives. Peace, Dr. Amen. Good morning. Peace. Did I read that right? Yes. My headphone fell off. (laughs) That's a reflection of my life, just so everybody knows the craziness that goes down. But hey, it's all good. So um, I expressed my gratitude before the show started. Um, Thank you for spending some time with me today. And um, I know you're a busy man, but I definitely... um, enjoy our conversations all right thank you for having me absolutely i know you are no stranger to the show so i mean not you're no stranger to the studio actually the full service radio yes um so you got this i'm the one that doesn't know what i'm doing (laughs) you do so um before we get started i just want to let our listeners know like what's going to go down in these conversations so and what you can expect so we're actually going to learn a little bit more about dr men's personal journey in this space um we're going to have him define health for us and what he calls dis-ease not disease but dis-ease everyone and then we're going to educate you guys about being well within your soul because dr men is a holistic practitioner and he helps people you know in various ways so um we're going to get down into that and then we're going to dig into dr men's work as a farmer and his connection that he has with the land he's doing some really dynamic things um that i would love for him to share and just how he connects to the land and what this all means to him so um welcome again all right thank so you. like i said i definitely want um your definition of of health and dis-ease to be the foundation of our conversations for today. So before we get into the crux of who you are and what you do, (laughs) um, let's define that for our listeners and for me, because it's really relative, right? I think a lot of things that we toss around can just be relative and everybody has their own definitions of things. But you being in this space, how would you define that? Well, disease for me represents uh, some level of stuck energy. So it's kind of the difference between the way that we perceive things and the way that we would like things to be. It's, it's a posture that we sort of are in that's a maladaptation to the way that the world is. And... So, and then when we get stuck in this posture, our energy is not in present time. So, a simple example, I mean, we get stuck in so many different ways. And let me say this, and when we get stuck, it's an energetic stuck. So, it's not just, you know, my mind led to these emotions and these emotions led to this physical state. Our energy 
is all of that together. Do you understand? So when we shift something energetically, we shift our physical body, we shift our emotional state, and we shift our mind. And so, you know, I guess before we get to disease, maybe we should define better, like, who we are. Because mm-hmm. I think, you know, one of the main questions that, um, that come up for people that we don't address, which we should, is the simple question of who am I? And, you know, we live in a society that is very uh, materially driven. And so uh, I think the, the core uh, delusion of the society is that money equals happiness. And in the process of, of uh, I guess, believing that or going after that, we lose some, some basic things that, that really bring us uh, contentment in our lives so in our sort of um these postures these the so no who am i so i'm not the body you know this is part of our meditation i'm not the mind um i'm not really i'm not the skin color even though i have to live in this body and experience life through this skin color um i'm not this set of emotions that i have in the end we're spiritual beings having a physical experience where the creator come here to experience itself uh, in its creation. And so I think it's that simple. And so, and all of us come with a different level of karma. We come with a different sort of journey that's unique to us. And so when we're healthy, we understand that karma. We understand what our purpose is in this life and sort of the lesson that we come here to learn, and we don't get distracted from that, and we can live out a clear purpose. And so the problem is right now is that because we do have this sort of material paradigm that we're dealing with, we get very distracted. And so we get outside of our purpose. And many people, you know, when you think of health, uh, you know, if, if... when people come to me and they have an issue, you know, the first thing I look at is like, are they anywhere near their purpose? <laughs> Do you mm. understand? Were you supposed to be an artist, but your parents convinced you that being a lawyer was a better deal? And now you or you know, working for the government gives you some level of security that... <laughs> Not really. <laughs> you should Sorry, always have. That. You understand, but it's these things that we buy into which cause us to get put ourselves in situations where we're not living from our heart. And you then understand? I guess, and, and then, then we get, get this stuck. concept of one day when I get everything I need, right, then right. I'm going to live out what I want to. Right. And so people end up living whole careers and at the end, maybe they save up enough money to like have a little bit of that. But most people, because they work that way for so many years, they just get stuck in a pattern. And even when they retire, they can't even adapt differently and live out in happiness because they're they're used to going to work all the time and they just live that out. So so not having your energy in present time. You know, the example I always use is sort of, you know, if one of us went to the jungle, right? If you left D.C. today and you went to, to the jungle and you were there with some of your friends in a group and y'all decided to take a break for lunch and you saw something off in the distance and you're like, hey, y'all, stay here. I'm going to walk over there and... and um, check something out, I'll be right back. And you get halfway to that space um, and you meet up with a lion, a healthy response is probably to, uh, to run, to get out of there, fight or flight. Run, get back to my friends, get to safety, right? Pee so in let, my pants. <laughs> all of that. So mm-hmm. that whole fight or flight, pee in your pants, <laughs> you lose your appetite, all your energy goes through your legs and you I ran die before I die <laughs> faster than you ever ran before in your life. Right. So now let's say a month later you're in D.C. and, you know, you're just walking down the street and, you know, one of your neighbor's pets comes to like lick you on the leg. And 
The next thing you know, you're up in a tree somewhere and you're like, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You know, the neighbor comes out like, hey, what are you doing in my tree? And you're like, you know, I was tripping. Right. And then you start to explain yourself. I was in the jungle last month and this thing happened to me and I don't know what just happened. And so and say, let's say maybe a year later, you're at work and the boss starts yelling and you have the same exact response. Right. But because you know you're at work, you start to, like, moderate that response, right? You can't do the full-on run thing, but you have the same feelings, and it's that same fight or flight. And so let's say maybe you even start arguing with a spouse, and you have the same response, and then you say, okay, we need to go to counseling to work out these issues, and you sit there with the counselor, and, you know, the counselor says, well, how do you feel when you're, you're arguing and uh, you say, well, I was angry. But you won't say that I felt like I was being chased by a wild lion, right? Mm. But that's exactly the state. There's no difference. So the, the situation started in the jungle. The, it was so extreme that uh, it created this response, and you couldn't break the response. Now, let's take that jungle and move to the jungle of the inner city, so let's say you grow up in a neighborhood and there's gunshots or brothers outside that you have to like figure out how you're going to fight your way to school or whatever. Do you understand? So it doesn't matter. Or it could be a situation where completely different than that, where somebody just left you alone to yourself. Right. Right. And you learn how to just be by yourself. Right. And that's OK until you have to like deal with people. Right. You understand? Right. So health is all of these these situations that I'm talking about. We develop patterns, and you know, in Chinese medicine. Well, let me pause. Yes. Let me pause really quickly. So, for those who are just tuning in, um, I am Melissa L. Jones here on the Edible Activist Podcast, chatting with Dr. Amen, um, who is a holistic um, practitioner at Wisdom Path, based in Tacoma Park. And so, I had him start off the show by defining disease, right? Um, and he's getting into the crux of like health, and I'm soon going to ask him about his personal journey. And so, this is just crazy because. Disease means your energy is stuck. Right. So in Chinese medicine, we have, you know, we have the principle of yin and yang. Yeah. And yin and yang are interdependent. Is it yin and yang or yin and yang? Yang. Yang. Okay. All the Chinese medicine practitioners I know say yang. Yang. Okay. So, so I know to say yang. So you say have yang. a female principle <laughs> or a feminine principle and a masculine principle. And they're intertwined. So if you ever see the Taoist symbol, in the Taoist symbol, you see like half of it's black, mm-hmm. the other half is white. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on the black side, there's a little bit of white. Yes. And on the white side, there's a little bit of black. So that means that they can't really do without each other. You understand? Mm. So it's completely interdependent. Uh, so, so you have yin and yang. And when yin and yang are in balance, the chi flows freely. Right? And so... You also have five elements that impact yin and yang. So in that, we should be able to maintain a free flow of chi. So when someone is healthy, you know, we have a range of emotions. Do you understand? And we should be able to experience all of them. So laughter and happiness, there's sadness, there's anger, there's fear, and then there's worry, right? Right. So if we get stuck in those emotions, a lot of times people who uh, are in situations where maybe laughter has been maladapted, like, you know, I look at, um, you know, in my family, I think my father probably saw some things that, you know, he he just could not express anger, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. So in situations where he meant to get angry, he would laugh. And then you would know, like, oh, <laughs> do you understand? Mm-hmm. Because I think, you know, as a person of color in the South, mm-hmm. during a certain period, that was just not acceptable to be angry. You could end up in a tree somewhere. Do you understand? Yeah. So let me not get angry. Yeah. So, or if a different example is if, you know, somebody comes and tells you that, you know, something really terrible happened to them and, you laugh. That's not really appropriate. Do you understand? Yeah. So if we're if we are if our chi is flowing freely, 
and we are dynamic in that, then we adapt to the situation. So in situations that call for sadness, I can express sadness. In situations that call for anger, I can say my piece, and then I let it go. I'm not stuck in it. And when situations call for worry, if something is coming up and I need to prepare and I know I didn't, then that's a situation to worry. You know, but if I'm like beating myself up over something that Ugh, my life every day I quit doing years ago, then I'm just beating myself up because or something I'm I didn't do yesterday. Beating, well, that might be healthy. That's healthy. OK, OK, you understand? OK, OK. You know, so I keep yes. eating that. I keep eating that 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 uh, that burger. And I know I, I ain't doing that. But burgers, yeah. But <laughs> So it's good to beat yourself up. But if you gave that up, you know, a year ago and you're still beating yourself up for it, then it's not serving you. Mm. And then we're just addicted to that negativity. Do you understand? So we have to. Health is about breaking those patterns. And I should say, as it relates to all of these states, we we sort of when I say the our disease is the difference between the way that we perceive things and the way that we would like for things to be. The way that we perceive things is usually in polarities, right? So we create a bad space, and then we project an opposite. So the bad space might be no money, no job, no woman, (laughs) no man, (laughs) you know. uh, No man is a good thing in Melly Mel's life. (laughs) And then we project an opposite, which would be partner, a pocket full of money, uh, whatever that yeah. you know. Yeah. So and then we say, okay, we need to get over here, and we need to stay away from over there. Mm-hmm. Mm. So then we create aversions and attractions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but when we do that, we we fail to be able to adapt to the situation in front of us yeah. because we're always projecting to be somewhere that we're not. So health is when we can accept the what isness. The what in our life. So, and when it. we create that projection, we need artificial energy to get to that place that we think we need to be in. So, when we look at addictions, when we look at food cravings, those food, the foods that we crave are the foods that are going to give us that artificial energy yep. to get. So, someone who worries a lot, they're going to crave sugar mm-hmm. because sugar supports their worry habit. Mm-hmm. Someone who gets angry a lot needs bitter stuff, but probably craves spicy stuff Mm -hmm. to help them get more angry. Do you understand? So the the negative food cravings that we have are part of that whole energetic pattern. Yeah. And so we put ourselves in a situation where, you know, if we don't understand that, then we just sort of get taken over by the whims of life and circumstances. And health is to sort of come to terms with that energetically and identify it. Mindfulness is just being able to see that duality that we create, right? And then have a choice not to participate. So I know my craziness, but I don't have to go there. (laughs) It's that simple. I see and I don't have, I'm not compelled to be a part of that. So then that step... Well, let me me step in really Uh quickly. So... How did you, can you take a few moments before I go to break in like maybe four minutes or so? How did, what what was your walk in this space? Like, how did you meet yourself in this mirror, Dr. Amin, and said, I need healing. I need to become unstuck. What happened or what didn't happen in your life? Well, I, I'll. That made you come into this. The biggest event in my life was, you know, I, I grew up. In the South, and and Where I went. Where in the South? I grew up in Louisiana. Wow, you were in the South. And, um, you were in the South. South. I ended up uh, going to college and and uh, working as a, uh, an EMT, an intermediate level EMT for okay. the city of New Orleans. At the same time, I got caught up in the scene of New Orleans, and my own addictive behavior came out, and I went through a whole spell with, uh, I guess, illicit drugs, mm-hmm. mainly crack. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so my healing came, I went through this sort of Afrocentric phase, which was, I guess, an awakening into self-esteem. But that by itself uh, could not really end the addiction. Right. It wasn't until I really came to terms with, 
you know, I actually met a spiritual teacher and through the spiritual teacher and the teachings in the community that I became involved with, uh, that energetically shifted my life out of that pattern. And then I could see that the energy that I was looking for through those drugs was really my true nature, which I found in meditation. Do you understand? So when we look at addictions, all addicts are seeking peace. Absolutely. Do you understand? They might be seeking it in a negative way because they're trying to escape, but they're seeking peace. So for it, me, is it peace or is it filling a void or is it one and the same? But it, I think it's one and the same. Okay. It's it's the wrong concept of peace. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. Okay. I got you. Because you're not dealing with your reality, uh, right? Exactly. When you do that. So when I say that, you know, there's no difference between a piece of chocolate cake and a piece of crack cocaine. And people are like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> you know? Right. But if you're a diabetic and your doctor just told you in a very rational way, like if you eat this chocolate cake, we might have to cut off your foot next week. And you go home and you're like, I want that piece of chocolate cake. Then there's no difference between that person and the, the crackhead. And I, absolutely. No difference. In my, so if we take away the, the moralistic judgment and we just see things for what it is, then the peace that I found in meditation was what I was looking for the whole time mm -hmm. in the addiction. And when I found the peace in meditation, it was a natural state. But it was also, and I, I recognized then that it was a natural state that I knew in my early childhood then I gave up when I walked into probably seventh grade and people were like, hey, man, your mom made those clothes. And, you know, what's up with that? And what's up with that? And I was like, well, I need to put on some Converse and maybe some Nikes and, yeah. you know, fit in. Yeah. So in the end, my journey through that was really about me trying to be cool with people and giving up my authenticity. Do you understand? Right. Absolutely. And so. When I and so I refound my authenticity, I found my purpose. I was genuinely attracted to healing. I, I remember when I was 11 years old, I got hit by a car. Oh, wow. And I get to the hospital, and the first thing the doctor says is, You know, where's that little inn that just got hit by my that just uh. Yeah, it got hit. Where's by that my, little inn? Like, where's that little nigger? Yes. Or, really? Hmm. Where's that little nigger who just got hit by my son's truck? And I'm strapped to a stretcher like, hey, I need to get out of here. That was the head doctor in the emergency room. I had done a project uh, that went all a social studies project that went all the way to the state uh, fair. And I won uh, the children's division in the state fair. And the people came and they had a question for me for the overall prize. And the question was, you know, so they saw the scars on me from the accident and they asked me about it. And they asked me what I wanted to be. I said, I want to be a paramedic. And they said, why? And I told them about the accident. And I said, you know, I don't want to, I don't think that people should be treated that way. Do you understand? Wow. And so my career as an EMT was sort of that injured person trying to treat that but in a very you know wow as a medic you're just reacting mm -hmm. do you understand mm -hmm. and so when I found myself in the meditation it no longer became me reacting you know I worked as a medic for the city of New Orleans from 1987 to 91 okay and so that was a period when you know, crack cocaine was at its height. Mm -hmm. So there was a, the murder rate was really high. It's crazy. Brothers were taking each other out. And, you know, many of us were on both sides of that whole thing. And so, meaning I was out there trying to save them, brothers. And my night's off, I might have been one who a, was, right, was wreaking havoc. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. yeah. so, and not being able to see the contradiction. So the, when I got to the meditation, that part of my life ended. And I realized that, that was the experience I needed to be who I am. Do you understand? Wow, wow, And wow. so I think we live in a society where rites of passages, you know, most traditional cultures around the world support their children in finding their heart. 
because we have this materialistic sort of bend on, you know, mo money is happiness, then we teach our children to go for the money. More money, more problems. Right. So, but more money, a lot of times equals more problems, especially mm-hmm. if you don't know how to handle the money. So that with that, amen. <laughs> so with that core delusion, all of our sort of our uh, religio philosophical systems have been adapted to materialism. Mm-hmm. So now you have all this prosperity preaching, which is really about you know if you're a good this or you're a good that, then you should have a pocket full of money and uh, donate to my airplane fund or whatever. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> um, ooh. Dr. So, Min is touching on some topics. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait. So, um, let me let me pause. Um, thank you, guys. So, I've been chatting with Dr. Um, Amen, who's a holistic pra- practitioner and acupuncturist um, at Wisdom Path in Tacoma Park, and he has just been dropping some gems and breaking some knowledge down, giving blessing us with some knowledge of his on what health is, what disease is, and really being connected to our passion and stuck energy and good grief like all this amazing stuff so we're actually going to take a really quick break i do want to when we come back i definitely want to touch on just how you help people and really touch on you know food being a part of that and also touch on the work that you do as a farmer as well so um, broadcasting live here from the line dc and um, we'll be right back guys You're listening to Perfect Day, produced by Artists Authentic. For more of Authentic's work, visit allornothingstudios.com. headphones on tight this time and then fall off (laughs) welcome back guys this is melissa l jones with the edible activist podcast i am broadcasting live from the lobby of the line dc i am chatting with dr nazirik amen um, who is a holistic practitioner and acupuncturist um, based in tacoma park his practice is called wisdom path and we have spent the first half of this show having him to define um, disease, having to define health. And he shared a little bit of um, his journey um, growing up in Louisiana, which is I'm still just soaking in all of it. Just so much knowledge. So thank you. All right. Thank you so much. And um, if you what is your website? Because I want people. It's to uh, wisdompath.net. So it's net. Wisdom Path Healing Center. Wisdom Path Healing Center. Yes. Okay, but online wisdompath.net. Yes. Correct. Okay, awesome. Purple House in Tacoma Park. Yes. You can't <laughs> miss it. Didn't know that was your house, Dr. Amen. Did yep. not know. Did not know. Um, so we talked a little bit about what you experienced in Louisiana. And I was, because I was curious how you, you know, met yourself in this mirror and right. this walk and this path to say, I need healing. You know, I need to become unstuck. I need to be healthy. And I just think it's really dynamic and how you break down what health is and what happiness is and also tying that to your purpose right. um, and what you're passionate about. So, the patients that you see um, at your practice, how do you how do you help people? So, I'm a naturopathic doctor and an acu- a Chinese medicine practitioner, which means that um, I guess from a schooling perspective, um, you know, I studied pre med when I was in New Orleans and worked as a medic. Um, I ended up not going to medical school. The 
being in the medical system allowed me to see that there was a, a serious component there that was really financially driven. And so working in a medicine for profit system wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do when I couldn't control what the standard of care was or any of that. So I ended up going to naturopathic school. And so naturopathic school is a four year postgraduate medical school. I went to a school called Bastyr in Seattle. And um, I also, while I did the naturopathic program, I completed an acupuncture degree. And so then I ended up in D.C. because there was a beautiful doctor here who had written a book on natural medicine and she had a thriving practice. So I came here to join her practice. And so she basically gave me the format, which I still use in in treating people. And so when people come to see me, you know, they come in and first of all, we get to when you have a disease, it's a person with a disease. You're not a disease. You know, people say my this and my that and they claim stuff when it's I'm working with this, but I'm not that because as soon as you claim it, you sort of become it or mm. it becomes part of you. Yeah. So I try to get people to when they come in, I'm a homeopath. Homeopathy is energetic medicine. So I hear people's story, not just their story, but I want to know what your chief complaint is. And I really focus on the chief complaint in a way where um, at this point where I stick with the chief complaint, because in that chief complaint is the crystal crystallization of this sort of stuckness on a very physical level. Do you understand? And so from that, if you stay with it, you can get the whole mental, emotional state without going into people's story. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And so I guess to, to be very basic is I use that as an opportunity to help people shift energetically. Because if you can't wow. help people shift energetically, yeah. and I just simply say, hey, okay, you're a diabetic. All you have to do is quit eating chocolate cake right. and this right. and that and right. the other thing. Most people, when they walk out, unless they're really desperate, they will not stick to it because they don't see how, you know, how it would serve yeah. them. Yeah. Like, I have these habits. They're okay. They serve. You understand? Yeah. So if you help people shift energetically, and then they could do the healthy things. So mm -hmm. the second part of what we do is we always put people on a detox diet because food we live in a society where food is grown for profit. And because yes. food is grown for profit, we're getting more and more processed. And that's both with vegetables and with uh, animal products. Yep. So the more processed you get, then the more health problems you have because you're eating, you seem like you're eating food with substance, but basically diabetes is sort of... Uh, it w is what in Chinese medicine we call it thirsting and wasting, but basically it's an overfed, undernourished syndrome. So I'm eating all this these calories, but my body is not assimilating many of them, or very few. Do you understand? And as a group, we're overfed, but the food that we have, because we're using all these chemical processes on the land for over a hundred years, we've demineralized the soil. And there's just not the nutrients in those foods that there used to be. So food isn't, even though you think that's what it is, it's not really nutritionally what you think it is. Do you mm. understand? So you're eating this stuff. So we sort of, our second visit is putting people on a detox diet, which is basically an introduction to a whole foods diet. We use a plant-based diet. Um, and for the most part, I think ultimately when people are healthy, they can decide, you know, how much animal products they want in their life, if at all. Um, so, but in that transitional state, we try to get people to, to move towards a whole foods diet. So okay. we started Purple Mountain Organics yeah, so because we were doing these that. cooking classes um, to support the patients. Because when you give people a lifestyle change and you're like, eat this quinoa yep. and this amaranth. And, you got to show know, them an example And they're like, something. what? <laughs> what <laughs> right. is that? So, so we started showing. And for me, you know, my mom was like the best cook on the block, Aww. right? She, she would cook and everybody wanted to come over to our Aww. house to eat. And she never taught me directly to cook, but I knew the smells. Yeah. So I know what good food is, yeah. right? And so I don't think, 
being healthy means sacrificing taste. And so what our goal was, was to show people, like, you can eat healthy food and have it taste really good. Yes. So, so Purple and, Mountain Organics, is that like a, so, uh, a food? That's, yeah. Is it like a hot food line or just like your... No, no. Purple Mountain Organics is our farming business. Is your farming business. Yes. Okay. So okay. we, we sell that. farming tools. We do farm work. So it started off with people simply coming to these cooking classes. Like we would take them. Wow. So in my yard in Tacoma Park, we used to have a big garden out back and on the side. And so during the cooking classes, they would be seasonal cooking classes. People would come over, pick the food outside, come in, prepare the food, and then they'd be able to go home and, and recreate the meals that we serve. But a lot of people had never seen food growing. Yeah. And they were like, wow, that's how broccoli grows. This is what a carrot looks like in the ground. And so they started saying, you know, help us grow some food. So I would go, you know, on my off days and help. I helped a few people, like, put in their home gardens and eventually it started it it spread out to um the schools asking us to come over and help them with gardens wow. um you know a lot of the urban farms in the area most of them we've had something to do with uh or i should say half of them we've had something to do with um with helping get them established so mm-hmm. we helped and then we got the opportunity with bread for the city uh, yeah. To they had gotten a grant to do an orchard at UDC, okay. uh, the University of District of Columbia. They have a farm, Firebird Farm, out in Beltsville, mm-hmm. um, and so that's how we sort of bloomed into more that's of a, a awesome. farming. So, so I sorry, I don't need yes. to cut you off because um, I I do have just a few more moments. So you focus on energy first, yes, which is. Makes sense, right? It makes sense, and because we have a lot, and I don't, I don't go to a doctor a ton. If any doctor I should go to, I should be seeing someone like Doctor Men. Um, but we do, t- we do talk a lot about cut this out your diet, don't do this, you know, and which is which is warranted, right? Right. But it makes sense. So if we focus on shifting the energy first within the body right. because and you can people eat healthy can, all day but if the energy ain't shifting right then you still crave stuff that ain't good for you exactly. and so but that shift gives you the break to experience something new and because you no longer need that artificial energy you can eat artificial something different energy oh my gosh that's just like the word of the day okay so we focus on the energy shifting that and then you come back. Um, you yeah, have nutrition this- is the core. So diet, food is the the number one environmental cause of illness. It's what we're putting mm-hmm. into our body. Mm-hmm. Our digestive system is bigger than is has a greater surface area than our skin does. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. inside of our intestines, from our mouth to our colon to our rectum is a bigger surface area than the outside of our skin, which means most of our immune system is actually in our gut. Most of our nervous system is actually in our gut. Yes. The biggest part of our nervous system outside of our brain is in our gut. So when we start talking about microbiome, we want to sort of get people back in harmony with nature. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the micro, if the microbiome in the soil is good, then I can create a good microbiome in my gut. Yes. You know, people are out here taking probiotics and this and that. Yeah. Grow some food. Put your hands in the dirt. Well, like, let's talk on that because your work as a farmer. Yes. And so, your, your connection to the land. Right. So my work. He grows is a, rice, people. Yes, I grow rice. <laughs> but so my work, our work as farmers come from understanding that. One of the the most empowering thing that you could do for yourself is grow your own food. It is one of the most revolutionary things you could possibly do, because if you can control your food, you can control your health. And so the rice came up because we were able to grow vegetables, Mm -hmm. but we'd eat a whole lot of starches in the wintertime and be like, whoa. So right. we, were su- <laughs> we were supplementing our diet in the winter with grains. I had cornbread and- yesterday, y'all. I'm not going to lie. I feel bad about it. Yeah. But I'm like, whatever. Well, you I can ain't make some good there. cornbread. You, you can, can make some really good you cornbread. Can. You can. But I was doing real good, though. Legumes, my beans, yep. my 13 so beans. That, and that's what we focus on. Greens, grains, mm-hmm. and beans. Okay. That's our thing with people. Okay. We really try to get people into a whole foods plant-based diet yes and 
you know, there's a lot of vegetarians out there that are just these transitional diets that are full of like uh, soy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and there's folks out here who think soy is like some kind of poison. Soy ain't poison. But if you you understand the energy of food, soy is a very cold food and Mm -hmm. it's very hard to digest as a protein. So Mm -hmm. in China, they've been using soy for you know, four or 5,000 years, and they never decided to put a slab of soy and, like, cut it up to look like a steak the way that we do. They use little pieces of, you know, one or two blocks of tofu instead of a whole bunch of tofu, and they don't eat the stuff every day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, so, but we've created in our vegetarianism, like, this this ideal, which is this meat diet. So I'm trying to get my protein just like a meat eater. I need to get my protein, so I'm going to eat all this soy stuff. And then if you're a woman, you start growing fibroids. If you're a man, your prostate blows up. Um, So we try to really help people do more of a whole foods-based diet rather than these sort of transitional diets and based in in whole foods. So um, So touch on just a little bit, just uh, two minutes, two minutes. Yep. I did mention that you, I read in a post um, and a, a news article that you were growing rice, and we talked about that before we started the show. Um, so if you can just touch on how that's been going, because I haven't met anybody in this area who's attempting to grow rice. And you, we had conversations before this show started as well about you being a landless farmer. Well, yes, I live in Tacoma Park, and my livelihood has been my medical practice. Mm-hmm. So I can't really afford in this area to buy land that mm-hmm. I could just go out to. So the beauty of UDC, this year we grew some land in Ashton, which was sort of a, uh, an annex to a development. Uh, the owner of the land uh, understands that, you know, the local food movement, like we, we've created an infrastructure where we rely on on you know, 1% of our population to, to produce all of our food. And so when I look at this area and I look at sustainable movements, not many of our sustainable movements are very sustainable in that if the store shut down, we'd all starve. Yep. You understand? And so how do we really create sustainability? How do we grow foods for sustenance in our community? Mm-hmm. So the Rice Initiative is trying to get grains into people's diets, grow more and you know, there's all kinds of stuff like carbon sequestration yes, and yes. and all you sort of complete the farming system when you introduce grains into your your growing pattern because they just sort of complete it. Just like for me, the grains was the thing in my diet that mm-hmm. I didn't grow. So to be mm-hmm. able to grow the rice and we don't just grow rice. We grow rice. We grow wheat. We've experimented with growing quinoa. We've experimented with with uh, growing a whole bunch of different grains. Um, and so that has sort of completed the food circle for us where I can say that I grow a hundred percent of my food. So that's really part of what's at the core of it, but it's beautiful to see that, you know, in this area, we are one of the first people to grow rice since the days of, you know, Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. I mean, I was taken back when I saw that. I was like, damn, <laughs> when can I get some rice? <laughs> I should have brought you some rice today. But Darn we, we it! You some. Okay, <laughs> I'll pick it up. You ain't gonna to save the postage. I'll come. I'll come. I'll come. Wow. I wish I had more time with you, Dr. Amen. All right. Will well, you come back and come hang back. out with yes. me yes. for part two? Yes. You promise? I promise. All right. Well, before I conclude my show, I always do a quick rapid fire where I ask a couple fun questions. You're okay. looking at me like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, they're very easy. But before that, tell everyone where they can find you on social media. So um, uh, on Instagram, it's Dr. Farmer Brother. Yes. Yes. I love it. So, and then Facebook, it's Purple Mountain Organics. Oh, you have a, oh, okay. So you have a Facebook yeah. for Purple Mountain Organics. And then for your practice, it's wisdompath.net. Wisdom okay. But it's yeah, so if you want farm tools, it's purpletools.net. All right, y'all. Y'all need them farming tools. Y'all know y'all need those farming yes, tools. Yes, we have the best farming tools around. We, we supply all the local organic farmers with farming tools. All righty. All right, so let's close this out really quickly. You ready? Yes. All right. So what is your favorite leafy green? Uh, beet greens. <laughs> okay, I can <laughs> dig it. I can dig it. Okay, sweet, spicy, sour, or salty? Oh, I'm all the way spicy. All right. What is your favorite fruit? 
Uh, probably mangoes. Oh, I love mangoes. Take me to the jungle, baby. <laughs> That's what Lauren said. Um, what's cooking in your pot these days? Uh, and uh, I want some, whatever it is, before you even <laughs> say it. <laughs> well, there's definitely rice. And <laughs> we're, we're full of sweet potatoes. So. Ooh, <laughs> sounds so good. Um, what is one way someone can channel their inner edible activism? Well, again, grow your own food, know your farmer. You know, these are the ways that we really create sustainable communities. So, okay. and again, to be an edible activist, food is, growing your own food is the most revolutionary thing you can do. It is. I'm getting It takes there. the talk out of it and put the doing into it and when we bring our being into our doing then i need to get unstuck <laughs> <laughs> i'm coming to see doctor but there's a couple of people i need to see okay all right thanks everyone thanks everyone for tuning in we're here live on full service radio every wednesday at 11 a.m and you can access each episode after it airs on itunes and spotify you can also catch today's show on full service radio.org which is also home to 30 cool podcasters so please check them out be sure to follow me at food talks dc on instagram facebook and twitter are you an edible activist? Of course you are. Come join me on the show. I would love to feature you. Send me a DM on Instagram or you can email me at melissa at goodsoilevents.com. Thanks and have a wonderful day. Peace. Thanks for listening to this program on Full Service Radio, broadcasting and recording from the Line Hotel in Adams Morgan, Washington, D.C. Full Service Radio programming can be accessed live and archived on fullserviceradio.org. Our talk programming is available on most podcast apps like iTunes and Stitcher, and our DJ sets are available on mixcloud.com slash fullserviceradio. Full Service Radio features over 30 weekly shows and over 50 local hosts covering every topic imaginable. If you want to be a guest or get involved, email us at info at fullserviceradio.org. Follow us on Twitter at Full Service RDO, on Instagram and Facebook at Full Service Radio. Thanks for listening.